In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you one of several ways in which you can apply a logo to your production. There are more tutorials we're going to show you after this one that show you some unconventional ways to do that that you may not have thought of. But in this one, we'll show you a more conventional approach. So what I'm going to do first of all is simply play my video and we have the circular saw cutting a board. We're going to promote a construction company. So I will stop that and then I'll click on my logo. You can see this is my logo for all of these tutorials. In order to apply it, in this case, I simply take it and drag it to a higher numbered track. I'll drag it down to track number two in this case. Then I'll lengthen it to match the length the duration of my video. With that done, I can either double click on it or press the F2 key in order to get into my PIP designer where I can modify the logo. First thing I want to do is change the size of it. You notice I have my safe zone on. If you need to turn that on, you can simply click the box at the lower right and there's one that says TV safe zone. And so I'll make it smaller. Now normally if I were doing this for a commercial setting, I would probably make it no larger than this. But I'm going to make it larger in this case so that you can see better on the recording screen. So now I have my logo. A couple interesting things that we can do with that. What I like in a construction setting is to give it a border. So I'm going to click on the border tab on the left. And now it gives it a white border. I have uniform color, so I could click on the box and choose any color in the color spectrum that I like. I could take a brown, perhaps, that would fit in with the rest of it. But one thing I'd like to try in this case is a two-color gradient. If I begin with black or white and switch to the other, I'll change the first color to black. Click on OK. And you notice when you begin to do that, you get this metallic look. And I kind of like that for this kind of context, but it's a nice way to add a border that wasn't actually there in the original graphic. So it's a useful little tool. And I will click on OK. So now I have my icon that I can use. And if I play, uh, we'll get this promotion. It will overlay the video and it works pretty nice. Now, again, I would make this smaller in real time. I'm going to get back into my PIP editor and I'm going to turn on my keyframing. So I'm going to click the arrow and now I have my keyframes. Let me shorten this because I'm only going to use a couple. Let's use position. I'll move my time indicator or scrubber to the beginning and start with a position right here. Now one of the things I find when I do this is it automatically in some cases will fade me in and out. I don't want to use the fade but if I do I can use it over on the left side. So now I have a keyframe. I'm going to move about oh, three-fourths into it and set another keyframe. And it will have the same value as the first. And then I'll move to the end and we'll set a third keyframe by clicking on the diamond on the position value. Now what I want to do is make sure that the second and third are different. So I'm going to click with the cursor clicked on the third keyframe I'm going to drag this over to the right and it should have the same Y position if you want it perfectly horizontal. Then I'm going to move back and I can actually right click here and say duplicate next keyframe. Now that ha inherits the value of the third one. So if I play this, we'll see that it will slowly move across the screen from keyframe one and then settle on keyframe two and remain there until it gets to keyframe three. I like this approach because it makes it very easy to read the phone number. If I just made it go from one to the other, the letters would always be in motion, and I don't want that. I want it to move, but I also want them to be able to remember it so they can make the phone call. If I want it on the screen longer, all I have to do is move the keyframe to the left, and then when we play this as we've modified it, it simply starts on the left, moves faster to that location on the right, and then freezes there. And so it's a nice way to use this approach with a logo. Again, I would use a smaller logo, 
but it, this is a simple way to make those small adjustments in CyberLink PowerDirector. In the next tutorial, what I'd like to do is show you how to use the logo as a particle. You may have not considered that, but we'll look at that in the next tutorial.